it's an advocacy model that is knowledge based the way that the PSP function where there's a whole research, there's a whole analysis that you'll work with. You have information from other regions at SADC level, at A level, at international level, which you will use to back your advocacy, not just shout from an uninformed position when you're outside. And it's a journey that needs to feed into the other generations to come. But you won't find that in any education curriculum. So the role of civic society is to have a knowledge management facility where all the work that we are doing is documented, is publicized into rich knowledge that can be used in colleges, that can be used even in the training of the new um, officers or new recruits in the, in the security sector. So that how you would train a policeman post the independence and how you would train a police officer now should be different uh, you know the different facets of uh, you know you know peace and security you know being you know talked about you know in the different houses uh, normally people never used to talk of food, food security as a, a peace and security issue for example but you know we are beginning to see you know uh, you know arguments you know across that the issue of floods the the issues of um, you know you know very unprecedented you know incidents and natural incidents also coming in uh, the issues of border controls you know again there is robust debates you know around these issues which in my own opinion i think is a big indicator that you know the knowledge imparted through this program i think is actually bringing some uh, good fruits to the houses it was the help and assistance of uh, the international partners also, also in terms of knowledge and exposure and experience and of course some of our uh, directors also have had some exposure in other environments and so they this concept of trying to make people conscious of to define the issues was a very important uh, beginning and uh, going forward obviously it must continue to uh, to grow because while you are doing that trying to train people obviously there are others who might feel threatened by that knowledge and they'll obviously be resisting it in other places. So yes, you must continue this combination of practical uh, involvement of uh, stakeholders and also training in the concept of what it actually means. It became apparent that there was no hardcore security issues in Zimbabwe and, uh, universities curriculum and this became a very critical um, <coughs> gap uh, so ZPSP decided to bring together uh, universities and uh, that is where uh, the idea of uh, coming up with a network of academics mm -hmm. was muted uh, with the so I mean one of the main purposes being the mainstreaming of peace, uh, security sector uh, reform come transformation into the curriculum of, uh, of uh, the universities. We didn't have the necessary capacity within our members. Mm. This is where ZPSP then came in um, and one of the most critical, I think, benefits that we uh, got from them was to send, I think, 20 members mm -hmm. of, of ZIPSET, uh, sorry, uh, yes, ZIPSET, to Vits University for security sector governance course, um, a certificate in security mm -hmm. sector governance. And uh, uh, out of that, we then went to the next step to craft a generic curriculum uh, on security sector governance, peace uh, mm -hmm. and transformation ref uh, uh, reform, which universities can now tap on so that we mainstream security sector transformation within the various peace leadership mm. uh, uh, courses that universities were already teaching. We just don't program for developing our own capacity. We have to ensure that there's adequate capacity in our stakeholders, in our partners, to be able to fully and adequately understand and implement this. For the advent of ZIPSET, the academic network that, uh, you know, seeks to, to mainstream issues of security governance in, into the teachings in universities, there was a huge challenge in terms of 
capacity of, of, of uh, you know, the capacity to implement and understand SST. We have seen the involvement of the civic society in the, in, in the issues of um, uh, oversight at the workshop, uh, different organizations there, uh, which um, uh, participated and uh, some shared information on the, the, the security uh, sector oversight, which are the expect, the engaged experts, um, experts during the, the budget analysis. Because the other area is when we look at the budget, the will, as a committee will be maybe, as my uh, colleague has said, the funding issues. But then uh, ZPSP has come up with those analysts, the analyst on the budget side. Because you see the budget on the security sector will be overseeing that as well. Our greatest benefit is to strengthen the knowledge of skills of traditional leaders in the areas of a, what we call out of court settlement methods, is, such as negotiation, mediation, reconciliation. Because traditional leaders, at the end of the day, they are there also to ensure peace in their areas. There are processes even in the traditional system, but you can enhance those processes. The training, of course, also will cover those traditional processes. That's the training. Right. But there also be other skills, what you may call a conflict handling skills, in addition to your traditional skills. Or within those traditional skills, you st you just strengthen them, like listening skills. So one of the um, areas that we have also looked into is to get people to know the con the current constitution, what it holds for them, particularly the Bill of Rights. We've even translated that Bill of Rights, and we've targeted mainly the women. Mainly the women. One, because they've been marginalized as usual, but secondly, because they're the ones who are normally um, interacting with a lot of people. And they are also the teachers of the children. So he's saying if you give this information to the women, you've also imparted it to their children and it cascades that one.